YouTube, what's good? It's your boy Jody Joe. Welcome back to Jody's Corner, jodyscorner.com. The website is officially up. I want to let you guys know that the jodyscorner.com is going to be the place above Twitter, above Instagram, above even YouTube of all things updated on Jody's Corner. So I want you guys to get that in the habit of a daily routine of checking out jodyscorner.com for all the latest news and everything surrounding Jody's Corner. So there's a special announcement that's going to go up there today. So as of you viewing this review, head on over to jodyscorner.com for a special announcement. I'll also talk about that towards the tail end of this stream. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it. And as you guys know, I am your boy, Jody Joe. Thank you guys so very much for taking the time out of your day to watch this review. As you can see, Alfred Hitchcock's Rope. And you saw by the introduction, that's the Sponsor's Choice intro. This is a Sponsor's Choice movie review for the members of Tier 2. I'm catching up on all my memberships so I can start 2020 off the right way. To become a member of Jody's Corner, you click the Join button down below at the channel. You select your tier, and according to the tier, you get the certain perks. This is a perk of Tier 2. People spend money to go ahead and help contribute to making this channel grow and giving the quality content. This 4K 60 frames a second with this uh, amazing audio with this great microphone and Jody's Corner Live, the studio and all that is paid for by viewers like you, viewers like the members who are joined uh, subscribers and the donators of Jody's Corner. This review is brought to you by the members of Tier 2. Thank you. So, Alfred Hitchcock's Rope. I don't no, I had no idea that this was a thing. I'm, I'm looking at the request and I'm saying, I see rope. I look up rope and then this 1948 Alfred Hitchcock movie pops up. I only seen two Alfred Hitchcock's movies in my, in my life. And they are birds and psycho psycho, which is one of my favorite suspense horror thriller movies of all time had me really excited every time and it gets me excited every time that i hear alfred hitchcock's name because when i saw that this was a film by alfred hitchcock i was excited because i'm like okay i'm gonna probably get something to the to to to, to the likeness of what uh psycho was like because i know alfred hitchcock is he, he delves into these type of thriller drama horror type of movies so this is a story that takes place in an apartment where two individuals host a dinner party with their dead friend in a compartment. And this is a film of two people who are fascinated with the idea of murder, who are fascinated with the idea of what it means to actually take a life in a meaningful way. They have this ideology, this this weird sense of ideology that they that they that they've got from school where they feel like there is a superior class of, of human and an inferior class of human and that the superior class of human has every right. To be able to murder, kill the inferior class of human because it's making the world a better place, you can say to bring it to layman's terms, like in 2019. You could say that these two gentlemen have the Thanos mentality. Resources are finite, uh, finite, finite. Uh, cut the half the population to save the other half. Basically, you could say it's like that, right? But a lot more sinister. So it's simple. The movie starts off with these two men killing their friend. Their friend's name was David. And these men's names, let me get their names. Uh, Brandon and Philip. These are men in their 20s. Men who have uh, careers, well-to-do folk, high up in the class type of type of white dudes, and they kill their friend because they believe in this murder. And just and 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 one of these these characters, uh, Brandon, he is so fascinated with the thrill of killing that he almost wants to get to see if he can get caught. And that's the contrary to this man, Philip. Philip. Philip is the real scary one. Oh, my God. Why did we just do? Why did we do it? Oh, my God. He is automatically regretting killing his friend, David. But Brandon is livid off of it. In fact, he's like one of those killers that is like, here, here I'm going to leave you a little breadcrumb. Did, did you notice it? Did you notice the breadcrumb? Huh? No. Oh, okay. 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 
What about this breadcrumb? Did you notice it? Ah, uh, like he just gets off. Ah, uh, oh, do you suspect? Do you sp suspect me? Ah, uh, like you, <laughs> like this. These, these dudes is freaking weird, and he leaves these breadcrumbs, and he 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 almost encourages people to almost suspect foul play. He in 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 Brandon's mind, knowing that his friend is in this compartment table thing wasn't enough he proceeds to do things in this film that would let i don't i don't really want to call the i don't want to spoil the film but, but this is a really old film but i know a lot of people probably haven't seen it i haven't seen it <sighs> so it wasn't enough to have dinner on a regular dinner table he decided you know what let's f with him let's just play and see how close we can get to getting caught and and philip is like no what are you, what's wrong with you, you uh, uh, we're gonna get caught uh. so brandon's like shut up beach he takes the dinner table arrangement off of the dinner table that everyone is invited to this party they haven't arrived yet but so it's just three men in the house and he takes the dinner table arrangement the fruit the basket the meat the hors d'oeuvres, the champagne, the candles, and he proceeds to decorate the very table that his dead friend is dead on the inside in. Just to get off, uh, just to get off on that shit. Like, bro, if this was a 2019 film, it would be rated R and it would be graphic. Like, he would, there would be scenes like in between him almost getting caught where he goes to the bathroom and chokes himself a little bit and freaking jacks off and comes on stuff like that's the type of character that i could see brandon being in 2019 this dude is sick he's freaking sick in the freaking head philip is sick too but he's like sick based on being a follower like he's only following the sickness that is brandon you feel what i'm saying so anyway these guys have this dinner party the friends come over the the aunties the parents the girlfriend and then and then they're they're they're, they're they're having this dialogue and and here's where i think alfred hitchcock shines a lot like the direction here is really really good now it's really really good for its time it's nothing now i mean because these trailblazers like uh like alfred hitchcock um he when you move the camera around just moving the camera around in a scene following a scene from the living room to the dining room to the bedroom that was trailblazing back then that was like what you just not sitting it right there on by itself and just doing a wide take and no 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 there was a lot of shots where he was you know following and, and tracing the subjects and there was a scene where the door closes open and the timing of it is just perfect these actors and i'm constantly reminded and i've always felt this way before even watching this film a lot of the black and whites a lot of the classically classic actors from the 30s the 40s the 50s and all that they're just better than these actors of today they know their lines like that. Their timing is on point. Their their delivery, their it's almost like they're not acting because like it's it's the lingo, I believe as well. And when I say by lingo, it's the way people talk back then. Like for instance, they get all up close in each other's face. Oh, see, what do you think? Do you think that I could actually do it, huh? Oh, well, I think that I can. They're all in each other's face and then the women talk weird. Oh, see, it's just Un unmistakable unremarkable i just can't do it I, I just can't fathom it what do you think what do you you know how they how they how they talk back then it's just different to how we talk now but the way they act is like you could tell by the movie that that's just the status quo that's just how people talk and then you add their layers of acting on top of it they really sell that shit and it's like uh you know they do that in i love lucy you know all the old films are like that because that's how society was that's how people conversed back then and uh the acting is just spot on it doesn't i honestly don't believe it, it doesn't look like they're acting i'm just you're just literally and, and they're such professionals back then i'm blown away by their professionalism i really think that acting nowadays has gotten really hollywood and what i mean by that is like all about like individual brands you could tell these actors in these black and whites are about the craft about the art and they're still humble actors nowadays i'm george clooney i'm leonardo dicaprio i'm tom hanks i'm a brand first 
with my agent and my agent agent and then the studio could bite me because i'm not doing that like they're like prima donna hollywood even the best actors and i love leonardo dicaprio but he's guilty of it too they have egos they have their own brands they're thinking of all that shit while they're even acting leonardo dicaprio while acting some of his amazing with some of the best acting i've ever seen he's still you can still tell he's leonardo dicaprio like just the the it's it's the professionalism of it. It's the and 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 it's 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 to a fault. That's just how it is. It's just how a society is. Like we've taught and trained our actors and professionals and everyone to 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 understand that they're a brand first and they're the companies need to bow to them. Back then, they bowed to the companies. Like you're an actor, you're a star, and all that. Yeah, but we'll shut your shit down, Jack. And it was, and it wasn't like that. It was, it wasn't a fear thing. It was a respect thing. Actors and stuff like that, they respected the art, they respected the craft, they respected the industry, they respected. And it was just, I just feel like it was much more about the art back then and less about uh, oneself, like it is today. And you could really see that well when you go watch black and whites and you go watch older films. So I just want to say that I appreciated this film just for the trip into another era of America where it was less bullshit and more about professionalism and art. And that slaps you in the face constantly throughout the film. And um, even though this is an older film, it looks really good. It's on Stars if you guys want to check it out. If you guys have a subscription to the Stars Premium Cable Channel, it's on Stars so you guys can watch it for yourself. It's in Technicolor and it looks beautiful. For 1948, it definitely was remastered a couple of times. It looks great. This is a great looking film and the chick, whoo! You know how you like see, you know how you see older like uh um Marilyn Monroe's in black and white and the what was it? Rita Hayworth black and white. And you're like, yeah, they're cute, but I don't really see it because they're just so old looking. Like even when they're young and that black and white with their stills, they don't look good to me. Like they look good for that day. And I never really was attracted to anybody in black and white. Like anybody or even anybody. Like the closest thing to a, a chick who was like fire to me was Dorothy from Wizard of Oz. Like Dorothy in Wizard of Oz is fire. That's a fire white girl. And I'll knock those red freaking heels clean off her ankles, bruh. But that's neither here nor there. When I saw the chick that's in this movie, Edith Evanson. No, that can't be her. Joan Chandler. Mm, that's her name. There she is. Joan Chandler in this movie was certified she looked good she looked like a, a a believe it or not she looked like a in this movie she looked like a more attractive peggy carter from freaking captain america oh, she looked real good her hair was beautiful and her dress was all nice and she now i understand why the motherfuckers was falling in love back then with all that color them chicks was bad back then their hair was all fly and their makeup was on point shoot like like you see these dudes like look at look at my man right here this dude uh james stewart right here on, on the banner look at my man got his traditional slick back gentleman shit going on i don't know if women are attracted to that look they all look the same look at them but with them women's bro i was the same way with the women like all oh, y'all look the same with the weird hairstyles and but nah the, the chick in this the chick in this had such a pretty face it was like yo i'll Blow that sheet out, son. What's up? And I was thinking, I'm like, and it was the first time. It was alert. It was alarming for me because that was the first time I was attracted to someone who was dead long, 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 long time ago. Someone who lived a hundred years ago. I'm attracted to him. That sheet is wild. You know how you see in the textbooks, they look all derpy and shit. They don't look cute. I'm like, she was the most beautiful woman of the 1920s. Let me see a picture. Like, this Get out of here. But nah, in this movie, you can see it. It's HD. I'm like, this chick bad, bro. Woo! But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and get off of that. Um, I really enjoyed this movie. Uh, the dialogue is so precise and and and, and fast paced and sharp. I mean, these actors are learning. You, you some some of these actors of today can't even learn 30 lines. They got a three-minute scene, and then you see an edit and a cut because the actor needs to go read some more lines. Man, these actors left and right was blowing pages of dialogue 
with the camera on them for like 10 minutes at a time. I mean, they're sitting back. As long as I've been reviewing this movie, they've been, they could act their lines like that and remember all those lines with pitch perfect accuracy and precision. That's impressive, man. That's impressive. The humans, humankind is, a, is, is capable of incredible feats. Uh, this movie is not, it suffers from being old. So I'm going to, I'm going to keep it a hundred. This movie was probably when it was released. I could see this movie being like an A movie that everybody raves about, but we are in 2019 and, but I haven't seen it. So it's fresh for me. And this is still a good film. I think the acting performances were spot on across the board. I believe the climax was really dope. You went, by the time you see James Stewart come into the picture, you really know what he's all about and you know what he's there to do. It's not a, a film that's hard to understand. This is a very simple, easy film. There's nothing really complex about it. It's just you appreciate the art and the craft and how and how they get to a certain uh, 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 outcome. And you see it's coming. It's predictable, but it's enjoyable. And that's what I appreciate the most. So as far as rope. I appreciate this. Shout out to the members for bringing this into my life. I'm glad that I have another film under my belt that goes under the knowledge. Thank you very much to the tier two sponsors that voted for this. And I will go ahead and I'll give this film, Rope, a B. Mm, there it is, baby. Yeah. I'll give it that B grade. Because it deserves it. This is a superior film, I would say. This, I definitely recommend you guys go check it out. If you're sick and you're in the bed or you ain't doing shit, put on a rope and see, uh, just to see the chick, though. Whew. She was nice. And I'm looking at a clip from her in 1950-something. Uh, she doesn't look as good. So it's it looks like it's on a, a film by film basis. I think I'm looking at her in the 70s right now. I'm seeing a picture of her and those those beautiful looks, they fade and they fade fast. Go ahead and get this 1947, 1948 version of this chick, Joan Chandler, and get you know what I'm saying? <laughs> all right, anyway, that's it. So Jody'sCorner.com is going to be the place for you guys to get all your Jody's Corner news, and I wanted to push that once more. And there's something that I wanted to announce right here on Jody's Corner now. I'm going to give you guys a brief announcement, but if you want more details, after this review is over, go ahead and go to jodyscorner.com and figure and 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 get up to date with the news but i would like to announce that starting next week it's going to be a new show with Jody and Andy called Yin and Yang baby yeah wednesday january 15th from 5 to 7 p.m. me and Andy are doing Yin and Yang one person's yin one person's yang got to vote for your your argument it's going to be amazing it's going to be on Jody's Corner live next week I hope to see you all there. Thank you guys so very much for watching. Head on over to jodyscorner.com. I appreciate you. I'm Jody Joe, and I'm out this thing, man. Deuces.